Hey folks, it's Dag, and this is an aviation update. We're going to talk about the MSL, the air bike, one plane, six cameras, the L19 project. We're going to talk about my rocket plane project, my 3D printed pilots I'm working on, my mega power supply, vacuum forming, my plane carrier, and the Avante lead sled. So let's get into this. So on the MSL2, folks, I've pretty much figured out it's going to cost 2600 bucks to rebuild this. That's wood covering the ESC, the motor, and uh, some other electronic stuff I got to add to it. So that's not going to happen anytime soon because I'm just really tight on money right now, folks. It's just impossible to do. As far as the radio system, I know how to uh, make it bulletproof now. And that can never happen again. If you don't know what happened, go back and watch the crash video. On the air bike project, folks, again, funds are really tight. I need covering, I need paint, I need um, you know all the stuff that basically sizes and dopes the fabric. And I, again, it's just it's not going to get done anytime soon. I'm going to try to get to it this fall, but that's wishful thinking. I'm working on what I call six cameras, one plane. It's the um, Flex Otter. And folks, basically, this airplane is going to be used to launch my rocket plane, to drop skydivers, to drop fake bombs. I'm turning it into a test bed. So I'm making all these hard points on the airplane so I can mount these little bitty cameras all over the airplane. And uh, I'll get into the cameras in a minute. I'm actually doing a whole video series on this uh, uh, airplane and the project, folks. So stay tuned. I'll have that pretty soon. But essentially, folks, I came into a really good deal. These little bitty micro cameras. I mean, normally they're like 27 bucks, I think, on um, Amazon. But uh, basically, I, I got a, you know, a price I couldn't refuse, and I used TPU and printed all of the mountings that I'm going to put on the airplane, and I'm going to have, I believe, 15 hard points on the plane, but at one time, I'll never have more than six cameras. So that way, like here on the wingtip, I have a camera looking down the leading edge. It's going to be really cool, folks, when I fly this airplane with all six cameras recording, but it's going to be even cooler when I'm dropping skydivers bombs fake i mean fake bombs and i'm dropping things like uh my rocket plane and stuff like that so i'm just mounting these cameras any and everywhere i can find folks it's really cool so on this vertical stab here you'll see that there's a little rubber band that's holding the tpu together and that's what keeps the camera uh mounted into that little um camera mount it makes it really easy to start the camera and slide it down in there and i'm ready to go and this is a mount that's going to be on the horizontal stab. Now, keep in mind, there's one on the top and the bottom of the stab, top, bottom of the wing, wing tips, top and bottom of the fuselage, and then the vertical stab. Those are the hard points. I wanted to give you a little bit of follow-up. Um, I started last year on a Peter Goldsmith uh, one-third scale L19 bird dog. And because of my work, I use my shop a lot for what I do for a living. And my workspace has been accommodated by a project I'm doing for work. So work always comes over the hobby, but essentially I got the fuselage started framing up on this and folks, I just I just don't have the room to build it right now. So it's been slid off to the side until I'm finished with this one project. I own virtually everything to build this airframe, but I don't have the motor or ESC. So it's gonna be a while before this plane flies. Uh, essentially, folks, I love this airplane, and I love what Peter Goldsmith does, and I just wanted to uh, have a bird dog. The rocket plane is actually moving along pretty well because I own all the parts and pieces I need to finish this. It's not like it's going to cost me a lot of money to finish it right now. And, folks, money is tight, okay? It happens like every three or four years. I will be doing a test of this that's going to be really, really cool where I'm going to strap this down to a, a 3D printed kind of a scale-looking test stand, and I'm going to be firing the four rockets uh, statically, measuring the thrust on the uh, both the airframe and the overall thrust uh, and power of the rocket plane. It's going to be interesting because I'm going to have my six cameras, plus I'm going to have my GoPro and my iPhone and another camera doing it in slow motion. So it should be pretty cool how this rocket plane gets test statically on the ground. So I'm really looking forward to doing that and then flying it next year at Ceph, uh, the rocket plane. Now, I will be doing a video series on this, but basically I'm taking a program called Daz. Um, I'm exporting the 3D model to, so that I can 3D print 
uh, pilots. And um, the video I'm going to do is going to be in a couple of parts, folks, because this is really easy to do, but it does take a couple of steps to do. So basically, you know, I, I export the 3D model into my uh, Fusion 360 and do some witchcraft to it. And then I 3D print uh, these guys and it's turned out really super uh, good folks. Uh, now look, I, I still got to paint them. I'm still in the infancy of doing the videos for this, but essentially I'm just playing around with what's the best way to print these and number one, the print come out, you know, really clean, <clears throat> excuse me. But I also want the, um, you know, not to be 10 hours to print. Like this was a four hour print and the bigger one was about a uh, seven or an eight hour print. But um, I'm just super, super pleased with how these have turned out so far. Now, this is still experimentation. There'll be a video uh, or videos coming soon on how I'm doing this. Of course, all of these files are going to be shared on my Patreon. Uh, so for five bucks a month, you can get access to all my STL files and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of cool. Um, doing a little update here on my Turbo Dynamo Power Pack. If you don't know and haven't seen the video on this, go find it on my YouTube. Since I got 100,000 milliamps of lithium ions in this thing, and it is working beauteous. I've been taking it to the field a couple of times now. I can easily charge... Um, up to 16 to 17 hours, uh, pull a full, per a full, full charge on this. So at the field, I just am having a blast with this thing. Um, if you don't know, folks, I used to always carry my generator, you know, which is about a 90 pound generator. And I'd have to have gas and everything to run my chargers. And that was a pain in the ass if I was just going to go to the field just to fly for, you know, an hour or two. But with this little thing, I can check my voltage internally on it, make sure that it's it's really giving me the output I need so I know when to recharge it. But, uh, folks, this is one of the coolest toys that I've, inv uh, that I've built in a long time. I didn't invent it. My friend uh, Berger and Dean actually built one of these first, and I kind of copied what they did, except I've got a few more milliamps than them. But I tell you, folks, to show up to the flying field, just with this little orange box and be able to charge 16 to 17 batteries um, is just just unbelievable. And I, I really enjoy the simplicity of just going flying like I was back in the 80s and 90s. And I don't have to take my trailer to the field if I'm going to take three planes with me. And I just throw this in and take it. I also, folks, want to give a little update on the uh, vacuum forming I was doing for a buddy of mine, and I've already done a video on this. I'm going to do several more videos, but this has turned out really super cool. If you don't know or haven't seen the video, folks, a friend of mine who's really, really old needed some micro canopies for some little micro fighters he's been uh, designing and building, basically a little bit bigger than a Gillows type plane, uh, three-channel RC. But he asked me if I'd make him some canopies. And folks, these just turned out really super sweet. Go find my video uh, if you don't or haven't seen this already. Um, I mean, folks, this was super cheap. I went to Amazon, bought the little vacuum form machine and 3D printed some canopies and uh, I, as, as plugs. And it just worked out absolutely perfect, folks. Um, I love it when things are this easy. Okay, I you know, sometimes I get into things and it just gets so complicated, it burns me out a little bit. But this was just super, super easy, and it just worked out just perfectly. And talking about working out perfectly, folks, if you haven't seen the video I posted on the plane carrier that I designed to go in the back of my Suburban, uh, you really need to go see this. And this video has actually gotten quite a few views, so people were really interested in it. But basically, folks, I took some old plywood I had, and, um, well, first I designed it in CAD, but then I um, took the plywood and made it so it would fit in the back of my Suburban. I 3D printed these little wheel mounts that would hold the wheels of the three planes I want to put on this carrier. Now, I built this carrier, folks, because, as I said earlier, I don't want to just pull the trailer to the airfield to fly for a couple of hours. I want a way to just throw airplanes in the back of my Suburban. They're not rolling around and getting beat up and I can just go out and fly. So folks, I take my uh, Avante, my uh, Flex Otter and my Flex Cessna 170. I put it in this thing, I strap them down and uh, it's just so easy folks. Literally in 10 minutes, I can load my Suburban and be off to the flying field to fly for the evening. And folks, it does take a little bit of patience to understand how to make all this stuff really fits because um, 
you know, I'd measured everything out and knew the airplanes would fit in the car. And I knew I needed to elevate this so I could put the wing bags and everything underneath it. Um, but go watch the video of how I made this, folks, because it's, it's pretty exciting and it's working perfect. I mean, when you think about me grabbing, you know, the silver plane on the left, the white plane and the camouflage plane, which are my, you know, my Avante, my, my two flex aircraft, and you just throw them in the back of my uh, Suburban. This is really cool, folks. And it really made it easy just to go have fun and fly. And this is me about five minutes before I left for the field to go flying. Now, keep in mind, with my little orange box, you know, I can charge 17 batteries. So easily can get five or six flights or a lot more than that. Actually, I can probably get eight or ten flights in the evening. Real quick note, on my Patreon are all the 3D printed, uh, I mean, all the STL files so you can 3D print all the parts for this plane carrier. So if you're really wanting to replicate this, on, it's all on my Patreon. And uh, this is the little legs that you can elevate that so you can put the wing bags underneath the back of the, um, you know, underneath the uh, plane carrier itself. And folks, I want to close talking a little bit about my Avante that I call the lead sled. I did fiberglass paint it. I added about a pound and a half to it. But folks, it still flies beautifully. I've had quite a few people after watching the video about this say, you know, is it a handful? No, it still flies virtually like stock out of the box. But you do need to realize it's a lot heavier. So that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and have an awesome day. Rock on and take care. Bye-bye.